Hey hackers, we are now at the final secret in our series of how to go from music hoarder to getting your crates in order. I'm Aaron Trailer, and early on in my DJ career, I realized that the problem for me was music hoarding. Way too many songs at my fingertips. And I was getting really close to having that reputation of being the DJ who simply was never prepared for his events. I was dealing with some real panic attacks with the song running out of time and not knowing what to play next. And then the inevitable happened. This is a photo of me. My first ever performance in Las Vegas. This is the promoter replacing me, taking me off the stage because I was just having a nightmare behind the booth. I had Serato face. I simply wasn't prepared. So this, 10 years ago, is why we are here today. If I can save you the panic, if I can save you the stress, if I can help stop you from making the same mistakes that I made early on in my career, maybe you can succeed faster. Too many songs, incompatible software, unreliable charts. I was losing gigs, and not just the money part, but the memories I could have made. All the failed attempts at getting a promoter's attention, not being able to get picked first. Ugh, gets you right here, each and every time. So after 10 years, I discovered the hard way and today, you're gonna have the Crate Hacker way fully downloaded into your head. You ready? Let's start hacking. Oh, by the way, for all my YouTube subscribers, I wanna remind you that if you stick around to the end, we're gonna give you a seven day free trial to the Crate Hacker's desktop software where we've automated all this process. The panic is gone. The Serato face is banished simply by clicking the link below. And while you're there, click subscribe. I serve up free hacks as often as I possibly can. All right. Now in previous episodes, we've covered secret number one and secret number two. To recap, secret number one was the ethical way to steal over $10,000 worth of live event and radio programming knowledge and build crates that crush any dance floor. That was a fun one. Don't skip ahead. Go back to that one if you can. I'll provide the link below. Secret number two was how to clone my proven crate building technique and organize your music in 10 minutes or less and they're ready to mix. And that was a lot of fun. Some amazing time-saving hacks were buried inside secret number two. Have fun exploring that one. And now today, secret number three, how to stay on top of all the new music automatically while not sounding like a jukebox or any other DJ. So key, so many songs, we gotta stay on top of them. I can help you with this and all the while you can still hold on to your creativity. Again, back when this whole series started, I quoted Tony Robbins who said, if you want to achieve success, all you need to do is find a way to model those who have succeeded. My role models, my heroes, on the screen right here. The Baker Boys Hip Hop Master Mix, the Club MTV Party to Go series. I was a huge fan of the producer of that series. There's a hip hop show, Full Throttle Radio, and it's hosted by Fat Man Scoop. Early on in my radio career, I had a chance to produce these radio shows. They were syndicated nationwide. I had access to their show notes which again to me is the origin of Cray Hackers. The list, being able to know what's ahead just a little further out. In this particular show note, that's a full hour that would fill content on a radio station. Think about maybe filling, not necessarily an hour, but four, five, 10 songs ahead. Now again, it takes a DJ to read the crowd for the right timing and transitions. But if you can start to program just a little further out without the panic of a song running out of time, this is what I want to instill upon you. The old school radio programming philosophy can be so effective on dance floors, and we've proven it with over 10,000 members who have tested our service. So with our secret today, we're gonna to stay up on top of all this new music coming out automatically while not sounding like a jukebox or any other DJ. And the way we do that is to take you back to where I decided to return. After 10 years of learning the hard way, I wanted to test myself and go back to Las Vegas. Only this time, I was in search of more role models. People I could find my success through. People I could get inspired by. Much like the Fat Man Scoops and the Baker Boys. My hometown heroes, now I'm going to the big leagues to find them. And there's a photo of me right here, front row, tickets bought, name plaque secured for a VIP front row at the Mobile Beat Convention in Vegas. Now this was the big networking function for DJs across America. They'd, every year in Vegas, they descend upon the Tropicana 
And in this particular year, I had a chance to meet somebody very special. In the hallway, I finally met Joe Bunn, who I'm sure you may be aware of from the DJ's Vault. Him and I got along great. And as you can see, we continue our story throughout the years, but it was there that I met him first. Now, Joe's a good friend with this incredible DJ by the name of Jason Janai, who was stepping down from Mobile Beat that year. And he was asking people to submit a performance to potentially replace him at the next year's convention. And I thought, okay, let me try and shoot my shot. Again, spending 10 years of getting prepared and absolutely obsessing about perfect performances. This was the result. In front of my peers, I pulled off what I felt was a really good manicured, incredibly energetic and fun performance. And right there, the DJs who I looked up to cheering me on and I, wow. Ooh, what a buzz, that felt so good. We were onto something here. I brought it back home and just as I started to get my name out there, I had the opportunity to DJ at, to me, what I thought was the pinnacle of my career. See, I grew up listening to Johnny Cash and so did my family. The Man in Black was just a part of my heritage. And back in Nashville, they were opening a Johnny Cash nightclub an incredible dance floor, amazing sound, and they wanted me to kick it off. And I'm blown away, what an honor, right? And here again comes the panic. Could this potentially be another failure, another mistake? Do I have what it takes? And also, at that point in my life, did I have the energy? I was having a great time in Vegas and doing clubs and weddings nonstop that year that by the time this event had come around, I was physically and mentally exhausted. Very little creativity left in my head and I needed to seek out, again, models who were successful. I went and I started hanging out in the DJ's Vault community run by Joe Bunn. And lo and behold, here he is inside this private group sharing set lists of his recent performances. What? And I'm realizing as I scroll through this group, people are really desperate for inspiration and crates to build off of. See, we're living in a world where songs are shorter. DJs aren't asking for songs necessarily anymore. Those are easy to find. Crates, on the other hand, it appeared to me that, that was far more valuable to them. It was very reminiscent of the old show notes. Looking at Joe's set list here, it brought me back to the expert programming that I would see back in the radio booth of the show notes. So I decided to double down on this. And before I did that, I said, I don't want anybody plagiarizing or copying transition for transition. What I decided to do was a filter process. Any song that would enter into the Crate Hackers library would have to be at a threshold of 60% or higher in both popularity and danceability and 40% or higher in mood or energies. This right here is what separates us between the sound of a normal playlist on, say, Spotify. 60-40 threshold is where we offer up consistently the most accurate songs for a dance floor and a DJ library. And we figured that you could fill in the rest with 40% creativity, finding those hidden gems that maybe we didn't share or discover. Before I set you loose inside the software, realize that every crate you open has to follow this or nothing at all. It's very helpful with knowing just at a glance what songs smash in a particular genre. Finally, good charts for great DJs. I can attest to it, and many others can as well. It's working on dance floors. We are creating not just a movement in terms of programming ahead of time, but also being able to, dare I say, manipulate energy. We're getting into the molecular level of finding if a song is danceable, or energetic or even mood related. So if you want to have a, a little bit more control of your dance floor, start playing with their emotions. It's one extra tool that we can help you unlock. As we continue to grow out Cray Hackers, we listened. What exactly does the DJ community need out there? Some things used to take hours. How can we shorten that up so you can have time to focus on your dance floor or your life in general? Here's photos of us continuing to hack year after year. Thanks once again to Joe Bunn, and he uses Cray Hackers in an entirely different way. I use it to go remix hunting, personally. I love remixes. I'll explain how that works in a minute, but Joe 
uses this to prepare for his upcoming events. Let's take a moment and let him show you how Crate Hackers works for him. I know you guys have been beat over the head with Crate Hackers ads over the past year and a half, but it's evolved so much that I really wanted to give you an insight look on how I personally use it. What I really use it for is a time saver when I'm prepping for my events. So let's get into it. As you can see, I'm already on DJ Event Planner. I'm on an old wedding I did on October 1st. I'm gonna go to their music, and then I'm gonna go to Edit Music. They only pick nine songs for this. Next, I'm going to just highlight these songs like this, and I'm just gonna copy. Next thing I'm gonna do is go over to Google Sheets, a new spreadsheet, edit, paste, and match style. Then all I really want is the song title and the artist. Again, I'm gonna do a copy there. Open up my Crate Hackers app. I'll go to text import is what we call this. I go to paste data, generate crate. Check this out, guys. This is literally now telling me my files have been scanned that are on this computer. It is now pairing up her playlist with the files that live on this computer. So ain't no mountain high enough. Got it. In fact, I've got a redrum and the original. I'm gonna pick the original. Beyonce, crazy in love, already own it. Done. Garth Brooks, friends in low places, got it. Sweet Caroline, got it. I want Scooter's version, so I'll check that one. So I've got all the songs already, I already had them. Now, if I didn't, I could have gone to any of the record pools I'm a member of. I just hit the drop down and searched the record pools. I could have gone to the streaming sites and found it. I could have purchased it from any of these sites, but I had all these songs, right? So now I go up here to the top right, export to Serato Crate. Your crate has been created. You need to restart Serato to see your new crate. Okay, let's close that out. Let's start up Serato and look for our treat. Now, again, Imagine that if this had been 50 songs, 60 songs, how much time it would have saved me. There was only nine here. Sure, I could have dragged together a crate real quick. What do we have at the very top there? Lauren's Wedding. Boom. There's all the songs. Nailed. Let's see, make sure they got all nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Done. So that is one of the ways that I save so much time if they did their planning through the portal on DJ Event Planner. Now, what I've really been asking for lately, because Spotify is so huge with probably billions of users now, is I would almost prefer now a Spotify link. Why? Because that also works with Crate Hackers as well. Let's check it out that way. So now I'm gonna go to the wedding I did just last weekend, and I'm gonna go to planning, and let's go to their Bun DJ Company event planner, and just hit print selected, and we can scroll down because I distinctly remember they put, there's one Christmas music playlist that they had at the cocktail hour, and then somewhere else in the notes right is their dance list. So all I'm gonna do is highlight that Spotify link. I'm gonna copy it. I'm gonna go back to my Crate Hackers app, back to that apps tab on the side. I'm gonna go to the Spotify import function. I'm gonna hit that link, paste it in, hit go, and what do you know? Let's just find one that I was missing. So Cardi B money. So I'll go to the pools thing down here. It looks like heavy hits because it's got the parentheses. Crate Gang and Late Night Record Pool have the most versions of that probably. So let's try heavy hits. They got about a million version it looks like. I'm just gonna click one of the ones that's not a remix. I want the clean version. But I'm going to go ahead and export this to the Serato crate. Your crate's been created. Again, I click OK. Now I'm going to open Serato, and we're going to see Timothy and Sarah's wedding. You see what my point is. Crate Hackers is the bomb. It is open now. CrateHackers.com. Get in there. I promise you, it is such a time saver. You're going to love it if you're a professional working DJ. And I'm not just saying that because I'm a part of it. I really do use it all the time. Thanks. All right, back at it once again. Our promise to you is to serve up charts, not just charts, not Billboard, not Shazam, charts for DJs. We'll curate those daily, weekly, and monthly. Oh, this is a big one right here. For all of you wedding DJs, the DJ Event Planner Top 200, I would always have to refresh that at the top of the year when they brought up the new charts. We can get those charts into your software like that. Joe Bunn, you saw him earlier. He's serving up his very own crates. 
injecting them into your software of choice. Jason Janai, the mastermind that I was auditioning for in Las Vegas, he too is a believer of Cray Hackers and he's offering up his crates. And look at this, my idols. The ones who I've modeled success from, the Baker Boys, HK from the Club MTV Party to Go days, my old and new heroes, they're all here. Oh, and we forgot one other. Yo, what's up, y'all? This is Fat Man Scoop. Give me five seconds, and I'm going to show you how to be a better DJ. I travel to clubs around the world every single week, 49 weeks a year. Now, because I run around the world, I usually wind up doing the same set. At a certain point, I refresh my set, but because I'm running around so much traveling, moving, and all that, I can't do it every week. And here's where Crate Hackers comes in. It gives me the opportunity to look at other records that are in a crate, BPM tested, so I know they work. Now, with that information, I can do one or two. Number one, I can go look at any crate that's curated by one of the expert DJs from the Crate Hackers crew, and I can say, okay, I can play this set the way it is. Boom, that works. I'm done. Or I do what I usually do. I take some of those songs, and I integrate them into my existing set. The good thing about this is as I look at other people's crates, it gives me a chance to look at things from a different angle and pick records that I probably wasn't even thinking about. Again, with Crate Hackers, you can do one of two things. Number one, play the set that was curated for you straight out. Number two, take parts of that set as ideas and add them to the set you already had. It's a help from a creative standpoint as well as a huge time saver. Not only that, Crate Hackers will scan your library and organize your music in seconds and export that crate right into Serato, Rekordbox, Virtual DJ, or whatever you're using. Why not do it? It's a no-brainer. Plus, you'll get a chance to get your hands on my own personally curated crates every month. Fat Man Scoop, Crate Hackers. Let's go! I couldn't be more excited. Fat Man Scoop is now with the Crate Hackers. See what I mean? If you want to achieve success, all you have to do is model those who have already succeeded. And before we get out of here, I just want to firmly press on the fact that we are not allowing any robots, no robots allowed. We have over 50 places to find different unique versions of that song, so every crate will sound unique and different and catered to you. We'll always serve up the 60% or higher popularity, the 60% danceability, a mood and an energy 40% or higher, Cutting out the bottom end so you can still do some crate digging, but confidently know that every single crate has hits in it going forward. I mentioned this earlier, I love diving into record pools and finding the best remix, bootleg, mashup. Just searching for a title inside the app helps you unlock every single record pool result. Click the drop down to find even more. It's one of my favorite things to do. I do a side-by-side -side comparison of which pool has the best remix at the time. Again, another way for you to carve your own path. At the end of the day, it's up to the DJ to decide where to take their audience. But with the amount of music coming out, you need tools. And that's where the Cray Hackers come into play. We serve up new crates every single week. Crates that are built for the DJ in mind with certain scenarios that you might be booked for. From bar mitzvahs to 2000s dance parties, underground raves, every possible scenario a DJ may get him or herself into. There's a crate for that. Look, we did this. We covered all three secrets. Today we showed you how to stay on top of all the new music automatically while not sounding like a jukebox or any other DJ. And we get it, you might be feeling a little overwhelmed. You may have just stumbled upon us and you're thinking this might be a little too much. I get it, but that's why we're here to help. If there's ever any questions, about what we do, go to help.cratehackers.com. That's help.cratehackers.com. For all the YouTube subscribers, again, thanks for hanging out to the end. If you just want to try the service out, you're more than welcome to. Also, another link. This one has a seven-day free trial to our community as well as our platform. Those of you who hung out through the entire series of how to go from music hoarder to dance floor destroyer, I want to thank you. There were some uncomfortable moments that I had to share to get my point across. I've been there. I want to always do better. I feel like no matter how old I get, I can always learn more about this craft. So perhaps we can see more of each other. I want to invite you to join us. I want you to go to CrateHackers.com and jump on board this community. 
I believe it's really going to help any type of DJ. Until then, I'm Aaron Trailer, and happy hacking.